and welcome to the Decking Awesome Podcast. My name is Brian and I'm joined by the awesome Owen and Kira. Hello. Hey. Today we're going a bit meta and we're breaking the fourth wall. We're going to talk to you a bit about our podcast setup. We've had a few practice runs and a bit of change in tweaking equipment, but we'll give you a rundown of the stuff we're using currently and a few of the things we tried out along the way. So if you're ever interested in getting started with your own podcast, hopefully this is a a bit of a help and a bit of a pointer for you. Let's take a rundown over some of the equipment we're currently using. Why don't you guys tell me about it? When you're starting your own podcast, it can get a little bit confusing and frustrating when you see all the different information out there, all the sort of different microphones and recorders and all sorts of stuff. But we've come to a very clean and kind of concise setup at the moment. We're using condenser microphones, uh, which we'll go into a little bit more later. And they're all attached to a single preamp recorder, one condenser mic for every person. So we can just keep on attaching more and more condenser mics depending on who is talking or in the podcast. This gives great quality. It makes editing the audio easy. And the setup is kind of a breeze. Pretty straightforward. We're doing this in a different house than we usually do. And it was really easy to set it up. Took like 10 minutes. Yeah, cool. So if you are hearing background animals, apologies. There are four of them (laughs) roaming around that we're praying will be quiet, but that's never the way it goes. (laughs) So what did all of that just mean? (laughs) Well, I guess myself and Owen did a lot of research into what equipment we could use. And it turns out you can use hundreds of different sets of equipment, even just for the microphones alone. We had a lot of different options, unlike USB microphones or condensing or uh, dynamic microphones. There's just a lot of different options that were available. And when we started out, we happened to have a soundboard and a microphone there. And uh, I guess that's where we kind of started from. But like a lot of it is just trial and error and then knowing what you want. Like there's more advanced setups, I guess, than ours, but The reason we went for a nice simple setup of like four separate microphones using traditional microphone cables plugging into one simple system was because having things like soundboards and stuff in our setup, that's a lot of skills. Like sound engineers put a lot of work into that sort of thing. So we wanted to find something that was simple and straightforward. So I guess that's how we how we eventually led ourselves to to the setup that we had. I think I think originally uh, we had everything kind of connected to a computer, which made things uh, a lot more manual. And we've kind of opted to instead of using the computer and like lots of different manual kind of mechanical components, we decided to connect everything into one recorder and let the recorder kind of handle everything. And so that kind of brings us on to the, what what a condenser microphone is which is the one thing that we're kind of using constantly. There's loads of different types of microphones, which we'll probably get into later. Yeah, that's Kira mentioned there, dynamic and condenser microphones. Forgive my ignorance, but, you know, I know very little about any of them, only for what I've Googled this morning. You guys are the tech heads here. So tell us a bit about the microphones. Yeah, so there's there's a whole bunch of different types of microphones. There's the two main ones are dynamic and condenser, but you can get a whole load of different ones in between, like shotgun, and you know stereo microphones. We can kind of just explain what we have at the moment. We're using a newer NW800 unpowered condenser mics. And so you can kind of Google that on Amazon, check it out and, and see. The reason that they're unpowered, which is and why that's a good thing is because they're much cheaper. If you find a powered one, that means it has all the components in it and it usually has like you know ways of audio filtering and stuff like that. We didn't want to do any of that. We wanted to have a bare bones microphone that was perfect for audio of vocal range. Uh, condenser mic's really good for that. I couldn't get, give you the technical details as to what a <laughs> difference between a dynamic and a condenser one is, but I know for podcasting and for being quite close, condenser mics are just really good at picking up that range and then allowing editing to be much easier. Nice. So you'd recommend kind of searching for condenser mics if if that's what you're yeah, unpowered. going down the road. Unpowered. Phantom power is what I've written down here in my notes, but I think that just means it's powered by the whatever it's plugged into. <laughs> the phantoms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when we originally started looking up microphones, we did find power supplies that you can add in to the set that you use where you power the microphone separate to the device that's recording. And I think we had to try that out because we wanted to plug the microphones directly into a PC, but that meant that you needed to add a power supply in so that the, the microphones could plug in, they could be real microphones and plug into a PC. But that just added loads of complications to our setup. So like we then had to plug every microphone in separately and they weren't really independent. And 
it added a lot of hassle. So I guess that led to us needing something that provided a power supply. So like soundboards and and this the recorder we use, they both can provide power supplies. Because of the microphone we chose, that led to a string of decisions being kind of made for us. So it became too complicated to power each microphone separately. So we wanted to just find a simple way to do it, which meant one device at the end powering all three microphones if we're going to use separate microphones. So I should say as well, this isn't a paid sponsorship or anything. These are the the equipment we're using that we found we liked. If anyone does want to sponsor us, feel free to send us out some mics, but this one currently isn't sponsored. So what about these pop filters we have in front of the microphone? What's the advantage to them? Yeah, we, we only really use uh, two additional things to the condenser mics, which is a, a scissors arm, um, which is what the condenser mic is attached to, and that allows us to kind of move it around. It gives a nice few different positions. At the moment, they're kind of just below eye level, so everyone can see each other. It allows for kind of nice, easy conversation. The pop filter pretty much stands in front of the condenser mic, and it stops all those S's and those kind of harsh snapping sounds. Now, it doesn't completely get rid of them, but it'll dramatically reduce that and makes editing just that little bit easier. And then we also have XLR cables connecting the condenser mic to the recorder. So yeah, originally we had one condenser mic and that was plugged into a recorder, which was then plugged into a laptop. And that meant we could power that uh, one condenser mic using that mixer. I think if you're a podcaster and you're starting to start off yourself and say you're, you're a YouTube streamer or you're a podcaster alone and you only need one condenser mic, there are packages where all of this is just in one. You don't have to get a swing arm, you don't have to get a pop thing, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. The most popular one at the moment is called a Yeti, uh, the Blue Yeti. That's really handy, which a lot of people are confused because they look at it and it's really a lot more expensive than any other condenser mic. That's because it's powered, it has all these audio filtering, it has recording, all of this. It's like a little tiny computer with, and attached to a condenser mic. Whereas we just wanted the freedom and flexibility to plug anything we want into this recorder, whether it's a condenser mic, a shotgun mic, a, anything and then uh, it would it would deal with it and especially when you're starting out it's really overwhelming to look at all the audio equipment there is like people who've been in the podcasting area for a long time might know the difference between the different like bits and pieces and the best way to get the best audio but like keeping it simple at the start if there is only one person think about getting a component that gets everything in one box and then outputs it into like usb because we still have an additional process then to just transfer our audio files from the recorder to a computer. But like, maybe you just want it to go straight to the computer with no extra hassle. If you are setting up your own podcast, it can get a little bit tricky because if you look at things like news broadcasting, they, you know, you, you have people with a microphone there. Usually that's like a shotgun mic and the shotgun mic kind of does it almost like a cylinder of recording. So it stops outside of that cylinder. You can't hear anything. So it's great for certain use cases. Almost directional. It's just recording just down one, down the barrel of a shotgun. Oh, yeah, makes yeah. sense now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then you, that way you can point it at people and you're far away and it doesn't get outside noises. That's not really needed in a podcasting space, especially for like vocals where people are podcasting right now. If you're faced in front of a microphone or like you have a guest who's not really sure what microphones are, you want to go for a condenser mic because it picks up a much greater range and it doesn't pick up a whole lot of background noise. It's a lot more flexible and you'll enjoy it a lot more. If you get a shotgun mic and it doesn't suit your needs, but you're not really sure, you could, that could be a whole lot of wasted money on yeah. that microphone. So we talked there about how the microphones like the Yeti might be a bit more expensive than kind of the the newer ones that we're using. What kind of prices are we looking at or comparatively is there a lot in it or is this it's about 25 euro for a condenser mic and then you can pick up the pop filter and the swing arm and the cables which i'll get around maybe 40 euro something like that yeah i think a little bit more but that's just for the very basic set so we didn't get anything fancy at all in in the in the stuff that we got but we still get like a, an audio sound that we're happy with yeah because the, these condenser mics you'll, you'll find a whole bunch of them and they're all very similar. You might not know the difference. There's not a whole lot of big difference. And you can really pick any of them ones you want. For a podcast, anyway. <laughs> for, for more professional stuff, you might need something slightly better. <laughs> yeah. If you're going for a Yeti, it can cost about €125, Euro, €150. It depends if you get a newer secondhand. The only problem with the Yeti is if you have two people in a podcast, those things do not like to play to nice together. So you can't really plug two of them in together and get them to synchronize. You kind of have to edit that later on link them up together so whereas our podcast 
all three of these mics are recording in one device. So when I hit the record button, we don't need to join them together. They're just joined automatically. Oh, perfect. So if you're sitting there kind of talking to yourself or talking on a subject, the Yeti's probably a good choice. But if you're thinking about having people on the show or there's a couple of you doing it together, maybe a set of condenser mics plugged into a recorder is the way to go. Yeah. But our recorder is the expensive piece of the, the equipment. That's where most of the costs went. So I think we paid about 400 sterling for, for the recorder piece. We might just explain the, the extra pieces there that, that we use. So the three microphones plug directly into it and it can record each microphone as a separate audio file. We use a Zoom H6. It's a really good quality um, recorder. So it can allow six inputs, which is more than we need. But it also came with things like a microphone that has kind of two microphones crossed that can kind of get rid of some white noise that can be in the background. That's the um, 120 degree stereo mic. Yeah, so it allows you to kind of, you know, visualize the space a little bit better. It's good for being on the move. But yeah, the Zoom Handy 6 is really kind of small and lightweight and portable, which, you know, it has a whole bunch of new features that are really, really cool. And we started off with just using that 120 degree mic to record a few podcasts. So some of the earlier podcasts, you might notice, we were all in the same room and it kind of, it it had more of a, it got a lot more background and uh, extra noise in. However, if you're walking around a convention or you wanted to stream something live, it was much easier to to carry it around and to get like a few people around the table where you wouldn't need everyone to have a, a unique mic. So it kind of gave us a lot of versatility that we didn't get from a lot of the other, the other components that, that we were really looking for. So the Zoom H6 is great for sitting down, setting up a podcast and having the equipment, you know, fixed at a table, but also quite portable. You can take it out around the conventions if you want to chat to people, you want to get a bit of background noise for atmosphere and uh, you've you've kind of got multiple choices to, to play with on it. Because yeah, the, the biggest problem you're going to have if you're recording a podcast for the first time is deciding what to get at the start. And if you get a handy, uh, a Zoom H6 handy recorder, then it kind of guarantees that no matter what you pick later on or what kind of way you go with the podcast, it'll be able to support it. So whether it's a shotgun mic or a stereo, 120 degrees, or you're plugging in lapel mics, you know, those kind of like little small mics oh, that attach on ones, yeah. Yeah, that attach to people's t-shirts. You can, this can do that as well. So you could have like a like almost like a an interview style microphone where the host has a lapel mic and he's pointing at other people. And then so you can do multiple things connecting to this thing. And it's battery powered. So, you know, this is you're a walking, talking kind of podcast and you don't have to worry about like multiple recording angles and stuff like that. An entire handheld recording studio. For those of you listening rather than watching the podcast, it is just slightly larger and thicker than a, say, a phone would be. So it's not even that bulky or cumbersome to to bring around with you. Yeah, and it does phantom power, which is the kind of thing we were talking about before of powering up the microphones. Yeah, it's it's a really handy device, the Handy H6, which it's in its name. It's pretty good. (laughs) (laughs) It took a lot of the pressure off us when we originally had an input mixer that we had to figure out the audio levels. And there was a big learning curve for that sort of advanced equipment, which obviously is what the professionals use. But for a podcast where you're not actually focusing on audio and it's not your profession, that's not your core bit. That was just a bit overwhelming to have to figure out like levels and trying to reduce background noise and worrying about like how much you're going to increase the the sound or what you're feeding into it and trying to balance all those channels together. Because you, if you don't have something that's recording at the same time, we were feeding in two microphones into one soundboard and then sending that file off to a computer via USB. So the board had to do all the adjustments. And because we didn't have the, the original two microphone files that came in, we, we found it very difficult to mix those things together. Yeah, so we originally had a Xenix 302 USB mixer, and this was, you'd plug in your condenser mic into this into this little recorder, this would power the microphone, but you could only plug one thing in, and uh, then you could you could put in the kind of manual mixing of the different types of inputs. And then Lots could- of little dials, <laughs> like hundreds of little dials, for only having one microphone, one condensing mic in, and then one just normal, like... Uh, through a little 3.5 millimeter jack input, it had, I'd say, about 20. 
yeah. things you can move. So <laughs> you're, if you want to sit there looking like a DJ over in Ibiza while you're just recording a podcast to yourself, it's the way to go. Yeah, but it, it's, it's even worse than that because you when you plug it into your laptop, you'd end up having to record and do editing on the laptop too. So you'd have uh, like, you know, Audacity or some sort of laptop editing software that you'd plug in and then you'd have to control it that way. Whereas with the Zoom, we, this isn't plugged into any laptop. This is just powered itself using USB just into a wall socket. And then in here, we can put in the filters we want. We tend to not to put in any filters just so that we can give our editor who does the stuff much more control over what to do. But you can also, you can do voice editing, you can do anything. And it's, it's a much easier interface. You don't have to mess around with things. It just, it's a much, much nicer process. I guess it produces the audio file. Um, originally, so Own did a lot of work with editing the, the audio file that the recorder produces. So or the three audio files that the recorder produces. He did a lot of work on chopping out its mistakes and balancing the sound levels. Do you want to talk more about what you were doing at the start? At the start, yeah, we had one sound level recording that we would go through. You had a couple of different problems. If you've ever tried to edit something before uh, the sound files, there's a lot that goes into it, a lot of kind of process. There's things called gain control, which is a kind of a big problem that comes in the podcasting is people speaking at different rates, different volumes coming up. Yeah, but when you're doing the podcast, you want it to be quite an easy to listen to process. And so you want everything to be kind of equalized across the board. And if you're using something like Audacity, which is a free open source program, it can be quite difficult. There's not a whole lot of uh, filters, the ones that are done, they're really great, they're community made, but they're not professional and they're not like high quality. And if you're like me, you've never kind of done sound editing before. So you have to kind of learn what all these different things when it comes to auto gain control and how, how to kind of actually apply this kind of things and then you also need to know how to cut audio for when people say the wrong thing or an interruption happens to the podcast you need to be able to cut all that and make it sound like well thought out kind of podcast and you know people say ums and ahs as well so you need to get kind of there's a lot of editing that goes into it as well as kind of putting in maybe a music backtrack or an intro so let's say all of that sounds way too complicated and you're not bothered doing it at all or downloading audacity and trying to learn how to do it can you outsource it? Can you just say, here, look, dump it off with someone else and let them sort it out for us? Yeah, so we did maybe the first seven, eight podcasts ourselves and it just became too much. And we found that a professional person coming in here would have done a lot better job and it would have been a much easier process and the quality would have gone up. And because we knew we had kind of the knowledge of how to do sound editing, we knew exactly what to look for. And so we went on to upwork.ie and we put in a job profile for sound editing. There's some really great people there. We found Brendan. Shout out to Brendan, who's going to be editing this later on. Yeah. <laughs> so he has the website podcasteditor.ie. So if you're ever looking for a podcast editor, you might want to check him out. Yeah, Brendan Russell is really good. He just takes that extra knowledge that as board game developers, we just don't have. Uh, <laughs> so he can really smooth out the audio much better than, than we'd have time to learn because... As you can imagine, there is plenty for us to be doing in trying to design board games and getting uh, our next few board games ready, ready to go, which is really what we're passionate about and want to focus on. So we just thought it, it made perfect sense to get help from somebody who knows what they're doing. You couldn't recommend it more. The, the qualities jumped not to, not to slander own and his editing skills, but <laughs> as I said, Brendan just has that extra skill level that we just don't. <laughs> yeah. I think it's great as well to have the three different condenser microphones being recorded. That adds a lot of ease to editing. If you are planning on editing yourself, definitely recommend having individual tracks so that if someone, you know, coughs or if someone does something else, you can cut that track and it will make the whole process a lot easier. And it just gives you more control over the audio itself. Because if you have to, if you have to do gain control on parts of an audio, it can be really tricky. It is, it is possible, but if it's three separate tracks, you can just apply it to one person and then just cut it down, which is great. I'm not looking at anybody in particular. He's looking, <laughs> he's looking at me, specifically me, because he spent the first seven podcasts giving out to me for how loud I talk. One time, just constantly about giving out to me, 
why do I laugh in podcasts? Because <laughs> wouldn't it be better if I just shut up and didn't talk? Yeah, no, I never said that. I never said <laughs> you that. You definitely get better about the laughing. Be- between <laughs> Kira's fluctuating voice and my ability to bang and knock into every single thing at the table around me, I feel I actually feel bad for you. For should, it's, it's easier with three separate uh, tracks. <laughs> <laughs> three separate audio mute tracks. Mute everyone who isn't talking. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Just like you did there. Yep. Pressing the fake mute button yeah. on the table. <laughs> tap, tap, tap. <laughs> Yeah. It also comes into where if, if multiple people are talking at the same time, if you are recording on one single microphone, you're never going to be able to clean that up. Whereas if it was separate ones, you can do it. So there's lots of different kind of things, especially when people are laughing and making jokes. If everyone's laughing at the same time, that's can it's be very difficult to manage that. And just in case there was any confusion, the three different mics are because there are three of us. If there's just one of you, you don't need three microphones. Yeah. I mean, unless you're really feeling like splashing out a bit of cash just to see how it goes, but... One microphone per person will probably do. So what about like planning these podcasts? Is it, do you think it's better to go scripted, unscripted? You know, do you just go, here's the topic, we'll wing it. Is it better to kind of plan out what we're going to say or? I think, I think we've gone through a lot of different phases in taking out some podcasts for how we actually kind of laid out uh, what we're going to do. We always wanted to talk about board game design, stuff we like uh, know about. So like maybe D and D too. That's become quite popular. So we've gone from like very improv shows to all very scripted shows. And I think somewhere in the middle is kind of like the perfect spot. So what we like to do is we have a thing called Nuclino, where we have drafts of the podcast and the kind of topics we want to discuss. And inside there, we might flesh out some ideas, but we put some of the topics in bold and just say, kind of, this is the point we want to hit home on or discuss. And then we will just kind of talk about it and see what people think. And it's kind of make it a, like a free flow conversation. But yeah, what, what do you think? Yeah, I think that when we started out, the mistake that I made was we, we went from doing blog posts where I could vary from being like broad to quite technical. And it, it seemed perfectly fine in written form because people could just skip over those sections or you separate it out by headings or pictures. It was very easy to flow in and out of very, very technical. Whereas when we took those blog posts and just converted them straight into into podcast episodes, it didn't really work. I struggled a lot with trying to find how to make it a conversation. Um, but then after after we kind of found our voice a bit better and found the, the style that we wanted, where we, we try and have a conversation with some interaction in it, we realized our own, mostly put a lot of effort into changing it to be like a question answer sort of format that, that brought out the conversation much better than just each of us having a topic to talk on, which was almost like us reading out the paragraphs from a blog post. It just felt very wooden. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of nice to have somewhere between literally rehearsing a, a gospel to, to a group of people stuck listening on the other end of a computer and, you know, just kind of winging it and talking the whole way through with no real structure and wandering off the point. So, I mean, for us, it works well to have the question and answer or the bullet points or the points we're just trying to hit. Or, you know, if you're trying to remember the name, newer HGSX49. Nope. (laughs) <laughs> Sometimes it's handy to have it written down in front of you. <laughs> you can scroll back through the notes. Yeah. <laughs> we actually also have the script in front of us while we're talking so that we can see anything that we might have missed or the names of all the things. <laughs> yeah. I think the adding in the topics, talking about the different kind of questions and just seeing how the flow goes makes a really nice laid out podcast. And we've gone through a couple of different ways of doing those kind of scripts. Obviously, the, our current podcast format does lend itself to become very kind of flexible in the amount of time it takes. But we believe that like, you know, if we are talking about a topic, we're, there's a lot of topics we care about and we want to get through those topics and some might be quite short and some might be quite long. And so like, so we were talking about like Cursor Strad, that can go on for like an hour just because there's so many memories. But if we're talking about something technical, we want to keep it interesting, we want to keep it condensed. So it's, it's there's a mix there. And it really depends on the topic you're talking about and how deep you want to go into it. When we have a shared experience, it is a lot easier. Like the Chris Estrad, we all knew the topic. Well, having spent a year and a month playing it and it, it's much easier to get a flow, but you can't always rely on that. You can't always expect that knowing a topic and keeping momentum in the conversation are both go hand in hand. 
sometimes you need those prompts. You need something to kind of to bring you back to the topic, to keep you on track, even if it's a normal conversation. And I'd say it's 10 times harder when you're doing it yourself. I think both myself and Owen did try a bit ourselves to to do some sorts of podcasts early on before we started out with Decking Awesome Games. And I definitely found that when you're just talking by yourself, it can be really hard and you might want to script a bit more because there's no one to pull you back or there's no one to kind of wrap up your point. You have to remember to do that. So you really need to ha- have it a little more scripted than we would when with the three of us, at least someone remembers what the question was that was asked and can can wrap that up at the end of it. Yeah. Uh, if you have two members of the group who've done extensive research and purchasing into all the best equipment to get, and you have a third guy who just shows up and talks into the fluffy thing in front of his face, <laughs> put him asking the questions because, you know, he can read a list of questions. <laughs> it works. <laughs> it's just about finding balance. It can be it can be quite tough on your own because like if you have an actual script and you're talking in a podcast, it's hard to read the script while you're talking. So you, you really, you know, it, we have a great setup here of three people and we kind of mix around the host because uh, we, we all feel kind of comfortable. You know, if we're not comfortable on the topic, we can always be comfortable as the host. And so that's this is a fantastic kind of setup. We do suffer from people putting on voices when they have to ask questions though. <laughs> it changes yeah. the sound of the... <laughs> yeah, the moment, you, the moment you're thinking about not putting on a voice, you put on a voice. It's... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's radio, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so what about what about getting your podcasts out there? You know, you've recorded them, you've edited them, you think it's as good as it's going to get. Where do you upload them? How do you upload them? What's the best way to to go about it yeah i think that's a kind of a pretty big topic we can definitely do a a future podcast on something as large a topic as hosting your own podcast online but like you know we're using wordpress to sum it up but there is like lots of different kind of choices we made along the way and when we upload our podcast onto our website on wordpress it gets to all the different streaming sites it's a lot easier than than you might think so i always thought this whole thing was really hard and you know like you'd have to upload to apple and have this whole thing it's all most of it's automatic you don't have to worry about it but what we like to do is we'll record the podcast, we'll get it edited by Brendan, who will add some really cool like uh, music from Daniel Birch. And once that kind of editing process is done, it's sent back to us. I'll create little snippets of the audio using Headliner. Now, we, I only did this for like the last couple of podcasts, but I really like this. And I think it, it adds, like, so, like instead of watching the whole podcast, you can get a little snippet. Am I interested in listening to this podcast? Get a little one-minute clip. The old little bit of bait to reel them in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think it works pretty well. It makes me want to listen to the podcast as well. <laughs> I'll create the headliner. And, and I like, live wow. the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, that would kind of bring people in. And once that's done, it gives you a little bit of audio. Make it less than a minute so that it can be posted on like Instagram, Facebook, all the different social media. And then you can also create like, you know, YouTube ones for that as well. Then it's social media and then just posting it, uploading it to uh, your podcast. Yeah, make it sound so easy. <laughs> it was a very long process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because at the start, we didn't upload to WordPress, right? We we tried to upload directly to some of the streaming sites, but it just meant, yeah. I guess we had the space available on the website and there was a lot more complications to having to, to upload to different places and wait for stuff to to get sorted or process and all those sorts of things. Like you have to kind of balance what you can and can't do. Maybe you just want to upload it to one place. Maybe you have access to somewhere, maybe you don't. There's lots of free services and paid for services out there that can make that that a lot easier, but uh, it kind of depends on what you have available. Like we were lucky enough to have space on the WordPress site and uh, Own knew had a good idea of what he wanted to get for that to be available to everyone. Yeah, so a very popular one, there's not many free services that kind of allow you to do this, but there is one and it's SoundCloud. And SoundCloud, really popular, obviously, and it allows you to upload, I think it's like three or four episodes. And so if you do your fifth episode, you have to delete your first, which a lot of people don't like. But it does give you a starting off point, and that's what we did. We posted our first three episodes on SoundCloud, and then we were we were gotten to the point where we had to decide, is this going to be something to invest in? And we really liked it, so we spent time, we got our WordPress up. And got it connected in, which is, which isn't a trivial task. But if you've messed around with WordPress before, you shouldn't find it too difficult. I obviously oh. hadn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think we used the Blueberry plugin to get to get a lot of the, um, but there's 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 some free plugins as well. Well, a lot of them you have they're, there's paid for services you'd have to add on. So um, if you don't have the the technology of like willingness to go in and actually manually update all the bits and pieces and integrate every single streaming service onto it 
Um, it's a lot of work. But if you invest in it, you can do a good few of the things um, easily enough. The good news is that if you are listening to us now, then you already know how to at least find one podcast. So <laughs> congratulations, you're on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And none of us have Apple as well, which doesn't help for trying to figure out how to integrate with Apple, the Apple Play Store or the Apple Ice Store. I actually uh, don't know what it's called. <laughs> I have it. I have it. It's iTunes. iTunes. Yeah, iTunes. <laughs> Don't you forget iTunes? Um, I have a Mac. Yeah, you'd be surprised. We can talk about it later, but it's mostly just RSS feeds and connecting it in. WordPress makes it life easier. Our actual website wasn't WordPress when we had this thing, and we had to convert to WordPress, not just for podcasting, but we actually had a whole thing of why we wanted to do that. But yeah, podcasting really kind of allowed us to talk about topics in a much easier way. Uh, blogging was fun, but um, I don't think it was getting that kind of topics that we want to discuss and that kind of improv mixed with scripting and then that kind of conversational attitude to it this is kind of set up works really well great um i suppose if there's one thing i can recommend more than anything else it's invest thousands and thousands of euro into soundproofing your entire house before you even attempt podcasting because sure that'll work out you're gonna have to do something with your animals as well. <laughs> Sell it tape them to the wall. Yeah. There's also a um, beer brewing in the background. <laughs> so you may notice there's kind of a gurgling. An noise. occasional gurgle. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, yeah, so it, it does work better in a slightly emptier house. That's a condenser, my kids. It's, it's too versatile. Yeah. I say. <laughs> good or too good? That's the question. Cool. Well, that pretty much wraps it up on setting up your own podcast. Hopefully, some of this has been useful to you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're on all social media. You can just search for Decking Awesome Games. This has been the Decking Awesome podcast from me, Brian, and Kira and Owen. Thank you very much. Cheers. See ya.